There are still a lot of people trying to label BLM and Antifa as fascists. Sometimes they get labeled communist, which is far more accurate. But there are even some people who try to claim that they're both fascist and communist at the same time. Which is absurd. And again, I understand why BLM and Antifa sometimes get labeled communist, because some of the loudest voices in those movements are communist. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And I think that's why they exist as they do, in contrast to the things that have been happening on the other side for the past few years. And as I've started looking at right-wing media again, because I took a break for a while, it seems common for people to claim that anyone that's essentially to the left of George Bush is communist or socialist. You know, they, they say it about the Biden administration. Biden isn't even really on the left. He's just barely to the left of the Republicans. He's a neoliberal. But he still gets labeled by right-wing pundits and right-wing politicians as communist or a communist puppet. So what does it even mean anymore when right-wingers dish out this kind of label? Same with fascism. Yeah, what does it mean when they dish out these labels? Or are they just trying to destroy the labels so no one can use them against them? I don't know. But it's patently absurd to call these leftist activists fascist unless you're redefining the word fascism. And there are a number of people out there who have been trying to redefine fascism. But there's no extreme patriotism or nationalism coming from these leftist activists. There's no leader or leaders. Sure, there are some people who get up on a mic, but they're not leading everything. And there's not a monocultural push. Without these things, how can you call it fascism? Yet there are still a number of people who call it fascism. They've essentially eliminated values, morals, reasoning, and drive from their definition of fascism. And how does one do that, honestly? It's pretty much gutting everything that makes fascism fascism, and then still calling it fascism. The leftists are pushing for multiculturalism and are fighting against monoculturalism. Apparently that doesn't matter. Apparently, if someone is authoritarian about something, it doesn't matter what they're authoritarian about. It should be viewed the same as anything else that's authoritarian. Because, you know, all authoritarianism is the same, right? It's a similar argument as those who try to say that being intolerant of someone because they spew horrible things about gay people is the same as being intolerant of gay people. Because it's intolerant and therefore it's the same. That's the messed up logic being used. You might as well say that good and evil are the same because both of them are states of morality. Blue and orange are the same because both of them are colors. Sorrow and happiness are the same because both of them are emotions. And so people use this type of logic to try to declare that multiculturalism is the same as monoculturalism because both of them are types of societies. And therefore, it's just as bad if either of them are encouraged by society or by our laws. And so with this type of logic, we have people declaring that to push against fascism is fascism. And so the logic goes like this. If you see something that's hurting someone else, and you try to stop that person from hurting that other person, you're just as bad as the person hurting that other person. That's the logic. It's the ultimate in putting fascism up on a pedestal without actually ever having to say it. Another reason why people are reluctant to call out fascism in this country is because so many of the people who are pushing fascist beliefs declare themselves as being the ultimate patriots. And how could an American patriot possibly be fascist? Well, as it has been said, when fascism comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and carrying a cross. To put it simply, the push for monoculturalism plus nationalism, plus religion or dogma, plus loyalty to a leader who pushes these same things, is fascism. That is fascism. But if you search around the net, you can find people trying to add legitimacy to the notion of left-wing fascism. Even that definition doesn't line up with what BLM and Antifa are doing. Or, you know, the Democrat Party that their tr people are trying to label as socialists, even though they're really just neoliberals and aren't really on the left at all. Oh, they're, they're, they're communists, they're socialists, look out, everyone. One of two definitions of fascism, among people who like to argue right-wing talking points, is anyone on the left who is violent. 
The reason why they're violent makes no difference. The fact that they're not pushing neo-patriotism doesn't make any difference. The fact that they're not following a leader doesn't make any difference. The fact that they're not pushing monoculturalism makes no difference. If they're on the left and they're violent, then the people who argue right-wing talking points will call those people fascist. This is the kind of lunacy the internet has brought us. And let us not forget that many of these same people who try to declare that any time the left is violent for any reason that it's fascism, these same people don't think that the Proud Boys are fascist when they're violent, no matter what the scenario. Try to wrap your head around that. Yeah, it's only when people on the left are violent, according to those who put out right-wing talking points. People on the right can't be fascist by their very nature because they believe in freedom and liberty. And the Nazis were actually on the left. See, they have socialism in the name. It's the notion that if you punch a literal neo-Nazi who's preaching fascism, that that's an act of fascism. Now, I'm not saying punching a neo-Nazi is the right course of action, but it's certainly not an act of fascism. And sadly, this whole thing gets worse, as there's one more definition that a lot of people who like to say right-wing talking points like to say. That being actively anti-fascist, even if non-violent, is still a form of fascism because it's trying to stop a mindset from spreading. It doesn't matter that it's fascism that people are trying to stop from spreading. Just the fact that people are trying to stop a mindset from spreading, it gets considered fascism. This is the logic being commonly used, you know, in this second definition. Yeah, you might as well state that anti-feminists are actually feminists, or that being against LGBT activism is actually pro-gay. You know what? There's probably someone out there who could rationalize that type of garbage. Let's not do that here, thanks. But this sort of thing is why people declare that big tech censorship of fascist ideas is fascism. Now, doesn't it strike you a little strange, though, that some of the same people who are declaring that stopping a mindset from spreading is fascist have no problem with some state government stepping in and making it illegal for schools to teach critical race theory? Hmm. Having said that, there are most definitely ways that the left can be extremely authoritarian. Basically, when in public, Everyone now has to pretend that they're accepting of all cultures, especially LGBTQ+. If you show in any way that you're not fully on board, or that you don't fully believe that all other cultures are just as valid as your own, all of them, you will be labeled as hateful and a number of other socially negative labels. So needless to say, there is most definitely an authoritarian element to that. But is it even remotely on par with monolithic oppression that forces everyone to have the same culture and the same lifestyles. It's certainly not telling everyone they should strive to be gay or non-binary. It's not telling everyone they should strive to have an alternative family. It's not saying people should strive to be in an open relationship. But it is saying that people should accept that other people are gay or non-binary or have an open relationship or any of that. It's the notion that other lifestyles and values are just as valid as your own. This is very hard for some people. And the ability to do this is the key to accepting the reality of multiculturalism. Now, I'm not saying that all cultures are just as good at everything as any other culture. For instance, some cultures are better at capitalism than others. Some cultures are better suited to be more creative than others. Some cultures are very strict. Some cultures are very permissive. But no, not all cultures are created equal. But they are all just as valid as each other. If you feel that your culture is superior, you should probably keep it to yourself. Because we all have to live together. It's not that hard. If you just can't help it, though, and you just have to express it, then express it to your friends who feel the same way. And if you don't have any friends that feel the same way, maybe consider starting an account on Stormfront. You know, that'll help, right? But it's not a welcome mindset around the general public. No, you're not being oppressed as a result of this. You're not a marginalized group. You choose to have these beliefs, and you choose to state these beliefs publicly. Now, some people would try to say that the left tries to force everyone to live the same lifestyle via regulations. 
So when things that are provably harmful get banned, and when corporations censor a bunch of things, and when there's regulations on almost anything that's supposedly uh, telling you how to live your life and it's controlling your life, right? Yes, this is apparently the equivalent to when the right wing tries to cram religious morality, nationalism, and neo-patriotism down everyone's throats and into law. Some of the biggest differences is that the left tries to use science to come up with most of their conclusions that they base their regulations on. Notice I said most, because it's most certainly not all. There's the notion that if there's a regulation, any regulation, that changes the way you live your life, that it's no different than a religious person, uh, you know, cramming, you know, their way of life down your throat via laws. Yeah, that d doing things based on cause and effect and science and saying, yeah, we, we need to limit these sorts of things because look at these, look at the result if we don't, that that's on par with telling people how to live based on things that are irrational, based on a religious book, that those things are somehow the same, that they're the same equivalent. That's weird. Now, is that authoritarian? I suppose. Apparently, it should all be really friendly, like, Hey guys, maybe we shouldn't destroy our ability to thrive on this planet. It would be nice, D don't you think? Please? I'm sorry. Oh, you don't even think that we're destroying anything, huh? <laughs> yep, all this environmental stuff is just a racket to give left-wingers more power. There's no crisis going on, it's just a hoax. Like a giant worldwide psyops conspiracy. People just want to hurt our industries here in America and give leftists more power. Yeah, I've heard this type of garbage argument more times than I can count. The whole power thing is just projection on behalf of right-wing politicians and pundits. Since they've shown themselves to be the party that only cares about power, willing to put forth voter suppression that affect minorities the most, you know, in addition to all the gerrymandering they've done all these years. And January 6th, did I mention January 6th? Yeah, there is usually one of three opinions from big figures from the right regarding January 6th. One, it's not as bad as people were saying. Two, it's Antifa's fault. Or three, they were real patriots. USA, USA. How about rules for thee and not for me when it comes to Supreme Court judges? Yeah, it's all about power. There's not even any virtue left. All you've got left is USA chants. Or how about the COVID situation? Yeah, instead of trying to keep up with the science as we get new information, they followed their traditions, biases, and religious dogma. Hence, the right's reaction to mask wearing and social distancing. Even if at times the religious right-wingers that I'm talking about actually agree with science for a while, if the science changes as we get new information, if this happens too much, many of these people will dismiss it outright and revert back to their religious beliefs because their religious beliefs don't change. Religion. It's like comfort food for the brain when reality gets too complex. Having said that, the way that so many people on the left push for heavy censorship on corporate platforms is disturbing. What's even more disturbing is how willingly these corporations oblige these requests. But again, as I've said, corporations have refined just about everything they could, at least in their minds, and they think going woke is the only direction they can go, even if it hurts them, even if it significantly reduces the number of customers they have. Perhaps they actually believe they're doing something noble. Who knows, but censorship is a pretty big part of it. I've talked many times about how I don't like censorship. I think it's the wrong route. It sends people underground where they fester and become more dangerous. The thing is, most of the censorship that has been going on has been towards mindsets that are judgmental towards people for things they have no control over. And these judgments are usually based on traditional or religious beliefs. So yes, this means that the oppressive parts of traditional and religious beliefs no longer have a platform on big tech. The non-oppressive parts of religion have at it. But the parts that make people feel like crap or less than for being something your religion frowns on, yeah, you can no longer say that kind of thing on corporate platforms. 
Yes, this is censorship, and I don't agree with it. But can you really try to claim that this is trying to control the way you live? Sure, it's controlling the way that people interact on corporate platforms. It declares that you can't call LGBT degenerates or abominations. It declares that you can't degrade women or suggests that they should be submissive to men. It declares that you can't blame racist attitudes towards black people on the black community itself or suggest that black people are inferior. You can't say that trans people have mental issues. And you can't spread disinformation about COVID, the vaccine, or election results. This seems to have a lot of people really angry. But to say it's controlling the way people actually live is a real stretch. It's certainly not getting in people's bedrooms. It's not getting into your personal conversations, offline or online. It's certainly not the government telling you what you can do. It's corporations telling you how you need to behave in the public parts of their platforms. Just like physical stores have codes of conduct. Oh wait, I just have to think about anti-mask Karens and stores that have codes of conduct. Yep, some of the same people who think that we should dress more conservatively and modestly and act more like God-fearing, church-going people are concerned about too strict of codes of conduct at businesses, in person and online. Funny how that works. I'm sure they wouldn't complain much if businesses were to ban people for using the Lord's name in vain. Like what Mike Lindell's failed social media site Frank Speech was going to be doing. You know, free speech, but don't say the Lord's name in vain and don't swear. Oh no. But we're not for censorship. Censoring those words isn't really censorship. Now, if you want to talk about regulating big tech platforms so they can't have such extreme codes of conduct, you know, that's a conversation worth having. So as I've said before, it's fine if someone says, I can't do that because of my beliefs. But the moment you say, you can't do that because of my beliefs, or you say, you're an immoral person because you're doing something that goes against my beliefs, then there's a problem. So let's imagine a scenario. Imagine there's a workplace, there's a guy that's showing his co-workers pictures of his wife. Normal thing, nothing to make any sort of big deal about, right? It's an everyday occurrence. But if he started talking about how he has a good wife because she's submissive to him, then at the very least, it's probably going to make a number of people there rather uncomfortable. If some of the co-workers react to him and tell him that his views are oppressive to women, telling him that is not oppression. And yes, I'm sure the guy can list a bunch of reasons why he feels he's entitled to have those beliefs. And you know what? He is entitled to have whatever beliefs he damn well pleases. But if you say those beliefs publicly, and they're not very popular, you can expect people to call it out. And that's not a form of oppression. Calling out bigotry, hate, or oppressive notions isn't bigotry, hate, or oppressive notions. It doesn't matter if it's someone's deeply held religious beliefs. If they're going to publicly state oppressive concepts, people are going to call it out. And yes, I get that it's your religious beliefs, and to you it's not hateful because God is about love or, or whatever, right? But if you're pushing a concept that is oppressive, whether you think it's oppressive or not, people are going to call it out. Again, it doesn't matter how deeply held your belief is. Keep it to yourself if you know that people consider it to be hateful. Why is that so hard? Do you want to rationalize and explain to people how it really isn't hateful? Do you just have to keep going on and on and on until you've convinced them that it's not hateful? Maybe you should listen to yourself from outside your ego for a moment. Yes, something that you believe to be good and wholesome is damaging and hurtful to some other people. Once you understand that something that you said hurt someone, stop pushing it on them. Stop trying to rationalize it to them. Stop acting like if they really understood whatever it is that you want them to understand, that they'd be all right with it. Just leave it alone. Leave them alone. If you want to make things right, just apologize and then leave them alone. I mean, sure, you may want to know more about why it hurts people. And who knows, maybe you'll change your mind about the subject if you do enough research. But do that on your own accord. Don't rely on the person who you just hurt. I mean, it would just be easiest if you just accepted that it hurt some people. Though, you know, I mean, of course, it would be better if you did enough research to find out that what you believe is messed up and you actually changed your beliefs, but, you know, 
I mean, that kind of introspection isn't very likely, you know? I mean, or not. I mean, do whatever you want. I mean, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But if you express some things that are not very popular, you're probably going to get called out for it. And that's not a form of oppression. Everyone is sort of in their own little worlds. And your world is not the same as other people's worlds. People don't need to know what kind of women you think are good or proper. People don't need to know what kind of negative judgments you have towards gay and trans people. People don't need to know how negatively you feel about black culture based on rap music and white nationalist propaganda that clips together videos of black people committing crimes. If you feel it absolutely necessary to tell people these things and to say these beliefs out loud, it's not oppression when people respond in utter disgust. Let's also be clear. Calling out misogyny is not misandric. Calling out homophobia is not heterophobic. Calling out transphobia is not cisphobic. Nor the other way around on any of this stuff either, so let's make that perfectly clear. You know, calling out misandry isn't misogynistic, so, you know. Do some leftists seem to want to turn traditional oppression upside down in some sort of revenge-filled fantasy? And they want the progressive stack to pretty much apply to everything? Yeah, and these people are deplorable. What else can I say about them? I'm glad they're not lawmakers. And no, they're really not lawmakers. Particularly not at the top of our governmental hierarchy. No matter how many right-wing pundits, and even people like Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump, try to say otherwise. But I know for myself, I don't line up with all of the things that come from woke culture. I don't think that young children, like four years old, can understand enough about gender and what it even means to consider themselves any gender other than what matches their biology. Come on, four years old. I do think that some LGBTQ plus activism has gone a bit too far in the past six years. I'm not saying I outright disagree with their goals. As a gay man, I agree with most of them. But I think they're pushing too hard, too fast. The Overton window can only move so quickly. And sure, it, it feels good to think that, you know, since we broke so many barriers in 2015 with gay marriage, that everything will be easier from this point on. But that's just not the case. And we can't expect it to be. Society being accepting of gay marriage doesn't mean that society is suddenly accepting of a bunch of other things. We have a long way to go. And as I've said before, we can't force this sort of thing or there's going to be a horrible backlash. And we're already starting to see that now. So what terrifies me is when I again start looking at right-wing media. I had stopped looking at right-wing media for, for quite a few months now. But recently, in comments on some of my recent videos, after people started telling me I'm strawmanning the right and I'm strawmanning uh, Trump supporters, I'm strawmanning everyone, supposedly, you know, I decided, okay, Let's, let's look at right-wing media again. You know, if you say I'm wrong, then, then let's look at all this media. And oh boy. You know, it's kind of like how the best way to, and the easiest way to become an atheist is to actually read the Bible for yourself and analyze it for yourself and, and not fall for its propaganda. That's the quickest way to become an atheist. And, you know, one of the quickest ways to, to, go more towards the left is to actually pay attention to what right-wingers are saying and not fall for their propaganda. Granted, though, if you support monoculturalism, you could say the same thing about, about the left. So just off the top of my head, something I just saw in my, in my email, there's, there's Conservative Review, the website. I don't think their YouTube site uh, has much on it. I think they, they stopped posting on there like a year ago. I don't even know if it's the same... The same place, it has a different logo, but uh, there's Terrence Pop, Paul Joseph Watson, The Daily Wire and everyone on it, Mark Dice, Fox News, a whole slew of right-wing YouTubers, the trending section on BitChute, then there's Minds, Gab, Parler, and a handful of right-wing news sites, and I'm seeing the same messaging on just about all of them. So don't give me this bullshit that, oh, the right-wing really isn't that way. I'm getting this stuff directly from the horses' mouths. I'm not relying on left-wing media to tell me about right-wing media. If you're on the right, and you call yourself a Republican, but you don't agree with most of these right-wing politicians or right-wing media, okay, fine. 
and I'm sure we could have an interesting conversation. But unless you're a huge YouTuber, or a popular pundit, or you're a politician, your opinions are just as worthless as mine. We make no significant difference. So when you basically tell me, I'm a Republican and, and I'm not that way, I want to respond with, well, congratulations, do you want a medal or something? Again, when I talk about the right wing, I'm talking about the lawmakers, the people with governmental power. I'm talking about the popular pundits. If you feel differently than them, it really has no effect on how they feel. So to tell me I'm wrong about the generalized right because you feel differently is a bunch of BS, sorry. Yes, I feel I'm within my right to attach the label of the right or the generalized right to describe the conglomeration of mainstream and independent right-wing media, as well as right-wing politicians who have power. The left-wing simply does not have that kind of solidarity. The right does, and it's quite clear. The right stands together, and the left is fragmented. It's been that way for a long time. And as I've said before, and I'll probably say a number of times, the majority of Democrats in power are not really on the left. They're just a little bit to the left of Republicans. They pay lip service to the far left to get votes, but they never implement any of the things from the left. Hence why we still don't have universal health care. This country is run by neoliberals and neocons, and in even more ways, by corporate America. Right-wingers in this country align far, far more with neocon Republicans than the left in this country aligns with neoliberal Democrats in power. Think about how often you see leftists complaining about Democrats versus rightists complaining about Republicans. Yeah, I rest my case. According to many so-called patriots and neo-patriots, there are three specific groups that are destroying America, that are destroying the cookie-cutter, traditional, imaginary, monocultural American way of life that these people feel is superior and needs to be spread, destroying traditional masculinity and destroying the traditional family. These three groups that they blame are LGBTQ plus activists, BLM and people promoting critical race theory, and women's rights activists. And then of course the notion that immigrants are going to destroy our way of life through population explosions. You know, the great replacement theory that's a staple of white nationalism. At the rate things are going, and many people on the right talking more and more about the Boogaloo, and Pompeo talking about pipe hitters, which is essentially the beginning of the new brown shirts. Yeah, with all of this happening, the three groups that I mentioned are probably going to be targeted. It will be pushing forth this notion that we should all be coming together as patriotic Americans and defend our traditional pseudo-monocultural American way of life, not realizing that this country consists of multiple ways of life, multiple values, multiple cultures. But you know, we're all Americans. So that means we should all stand for one nation under God, because we're created in his image and he gave us unalienable rights, and that's what it means to be an American. At least according to the type of neo-patriotism that has rose so much with Trump. Yeah, at the rate things are going, if Trump somehow does manage to win in 2024, and right-wingers who were responsible for January 6th haven't been punished in any sort of significant way, and they feel that they're invincible. I don't honestly think it's that far-fetched to think that, you know, a few years into Trump's second term, there could eventually be a push to sort of separate those that they consider anti-American from the rest of the public. The excuse will be that these people want to destroy America. They, they want to destroy our way of life. Now, how these people would be separated from society, I don't know. But... With the way that some of these groups are being demonized now as, as being the most evil thing possible, I wouldn't put it past some of Trump's supporters to push this sort of thing. Maybe Trump himself wouldn't push it, but his supporters probably would. So let's be perfectly clear. The present danger of fascism is coming from the right, not the left. Again, we do not have one unified way of life or one set of values. There is no one way to be an American. We all live under a set of laws, laws that are supposed to be secular, and we're supposed to be able to look at the world any damn way we feel like. 
and live our lives however we want as long as we're not violating the rights of other people. If you want to live your life according to traditional values, nobody's stopping you. Just don't criticize people who don't. And don't throw a fit and claim you're being oppressed when other values and ideas are put up on a pedestal occasionally. Seeing a gay character on TV isn't oppressive to straight people or their children. Seeing an alternative family on TV isn't oppressive to traditional families. Seeing an atheist on TV isn't oppressive to your religion. Also, don't claim that you're oppressed when there are negative consequences to when you publicly declare how wrong you think other people's lifestyles and values are. That's not oppression. As long as it's not the government telling you that you can't state those opinions, your freedom of speech has not been violated. You have not been oppressed. You're not losing your American way of life. You're free to live your life how you want. And as I said in my last video, America isn't falling apart because we've become too permissive. No, the free market by itself won't save us. And neither will Trump and a fascist movement of so-called patriots. If you have patriotic fantasies about taking care of these groups you think are destroying America, please keep your fascism to yourself. Thanks.